You are on. Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam, I be the Angie during political commentary for the media speaks. HDF up there. YouTube on uh, the Media Speaks and Facebook right in front of me. Greetings and uh, happy Twiggy Day. Um, I promised that I would address this and I've been putting it off and putting it off and I'm going to do so very quickly. A few people have noticed that my Thanksgiving shows have not been exactly what they used to be. And I wanted to point out that it wasn't due to any political correctness or due to, uh, you know, me suddenly having some aversion to holidays. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all, and Merry Christmas, you know, when it comes. By all means, definitely. I am a Christian who is very, very thankful for the fact that I get up every day and nothing hurts at my age. Nothing. I can still go snowboarding. Have no one to go snowboarding with. Now, I'm going to get into this briefly only because I think other people have asked about it a lot. Um, Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen, and I are not together at the moment. And I think that's been a big part of it. I'm just saying openly, I am no, no blame, no gossip here. So if you tuned in for that, you can tune out. Um, that to me, family to me, is what holidays are. I have friends that invite me over, whatever. But if your, your family, it's, it's weird. You wouldn't think uh, long hair and tattoos in a band. A family is, uh, is everything to me. And... Um, my mom and dad passed. Christelle and I are not together. And we used to do, I mean, we do crazy things. Or we would take um, on Christmas. And we'd put anything we didn't want anybody in, in our bedroom. And keep our bedroom off limits. But this, what you're seeing here is a duplex. We would open up every single room in the house with a different theme. Now, this took forever to do. But we would invite people over. One time, uh, we had so many people that you couldn't even move in the rooms. It was wonderful. Um, the sunroom might be, it'll be the Christmas tree, and everybody would go into it and take a number. And each number correspond to a room. So we had, like, the horror room in the attic. And I used to work at a Halloween store. So we would make a maze with the, um, they have these plastic, they, it looks like fake trees. They used to have it as a show set. They look like fake trees. They look like bats. Well, we'd make a maze out of these long plastic sheets in the attic and have like a candle on or maybe a strobe just sort of flickering in the back room. Hey, Dave. Uh, just sort of flickering off in the back room. And then people would go through each, you know, go to the maze. When they get to the end, maybe they'd have to reach into uh, a, a thing of fake blood and it would send them to Whoville. Whoville was another room in the house. And it was decked out with uh, anything that had to do with... Um, the, um, the Grinch. And we would go ahead and make, hey Susan, we would go ahead and make all these different designs within the room. Now you're, you're taking these numbers out of each room. And then, you know, the, the bathroom might be the winter room. And we had a snowboarder set up and uh, he was fishing one year for uh, in the tub. And in the tub was bottles, plastic bottles. You had to open up the, the bottle that corresponded to your number. You had to take it out of the tub. And then go to another room. And at the end, you got Christmas gifts. And you didn't know exactly what the Christmas gift was going to be. You ended up going, it'd take you 15 or 20 minutes to do this whole mission we would send people on. And we didn't send people on the same mission. So there were people traversing at rooms at different orders. And at the end, you know, you might get something from the dollar store. Or we would sometimes buy gold or silver or something like that. Not, you know, the copious amounts or anything, but some. And then you'd find out, you know, you won gold or silver or whatever. And then just saying in a nutshell, that to me was awesome. That, that to me was the holidays. And with some of that now not being what the holidays are, I've sort of bowed out of them. So I know that the show has not done, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not thankful for things. I'm not, I, I lost my job as a writer and I didn't do anything wrong. Facebook, as you know, I've made videos on this. Facebook shut down our page for absolutely no reason at all. And this was after Argus Media, who employed yours truly, had given them 
thousands of dollars. I don't even know how much in advertising. You know, there's about, and I'm not giving you a sad, poor me story. Do you realize that there might be about 800 writers? No, I'm sorry, there were 800 sites. There are probably 1,800 or more writers, at least, at least, that were unemployed as of a month ago. Do you know that? Do you know that now is like the worst time to be a writer ever because everybody and their brother is interested now in trying to get a job to replace, you know, if you imagine having 800 factories closed, it would not be a good time to be a factory worker. Well, that happened to me, but I can tell you what, I've been only DJing two and three nights a week while I figure out exactly what I'm going to do, trying to give Argus Media time to win their lawsuit, whatever, whatever. I've managed to make ends meet just DJing. Because, I mean, there's definitely things to be thankful for in life. But, I mean, within one year, I managed to lose the band. And the band was like, like, a, like a family. The band was... Everyone in the band, everyone at the label, we, we saw each other every single day, and we actually lived the way that people say bands don't. Now, we didn't live together, but everyone in that unit saw each other all the time. It wasn't infrequent. And thing, and again, no gossip, so I hope you didn't tune in for it. Um, that fell apart. We lost our record deal, and that was a big one to me. And not only am I a big family wife person, again, I was hoping to have kids this year. I was imagining what my kids were going to look like because both my uh, wife and I have eyes like uh, Pringles cans. So, I mean, it should have been interesting to see what color of googlies they came out with. But also, when the label went south, I sort of, I sort of you know, pulled away. I'm not going to say I, I'm an unhappy, miserable person, but it changed me. It was, uh, it was a very big blow. I managed to lose... It just did a lot of things. I'm going to go through. I've had tax issues. I've had to have uh, the properties I've had looked at. Uh, if I gave you the whole list, it would, and you know what? I guarantee you everybody has their own list, so I wouldn't need to. But I did want to address why I don't do as much with the holidays as I used to do. Um, I'm just not into them as much anymore. Holidays, to me, were <clears throat> opening up your house and doing something like that. So... Again, on Halloween and those, I, I sort of hide behind the characters, so people didn't really notice it. I just made more of the characters. Why? Because Halloween, to me, was going to hollow weekends. Halloween, to me, was, you know, doing a lot of things with my family. And like I said, my mom and dad are both dead, and I just have pulled away from holidays. That doesn't mean I'm against them. It doesn't mean I think you should say Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas or anything ridiculous like that. It's just that for me, personally, I sort of have, uh, don't really have the things that make me all about holidays going on in my life. So I'm not going to come on here and I'm not going to fake it. It reminds me of uh, the NFL band, and this is the last I'm going to say on it before we get to news. Um, I boycotted the NFL because of the kneeling nonsense last year. Boycotted it outright. I said that I would watch if the New England Patriots made it to the Super Bowl, and they did. So I did watch that game. I went by myself. That was a lot of fun. To BW3s and watch them get annihilated. They got destroyed. This year, people were asking me if I was going to do it again. Because last year, it was all up on the site that I had done it. It was a big deal because I watched football quite a bit. When I started working again as a DJ, in front of me at the bar is a massive big screen TV that it's a projection. It is the wall. It literally is half of the wall on a two-story building with um, um, I'd say the ceiling has got to be 25 feet or higher. It's a huge building. Christie's Cabaret in Canton. Um, North Canton. If you say you're boycotting and you work on Mondays, which I do, and sometimes Sundays, I don't see the screen in front of me, so I'm going to come out here and tell all my listeners that I'm boycotting football. That is a lie. I might say that I, I would like to, but I don't see it. I don't see the screen. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it because it would be dishonest to you guys. That's kind of the same thing I do with holidays. Um, there were things that made holidays 
wonderful for me. And now that they're not, I simply go about my own thing and begrudge no one any happiness in them. That is it, my friends. I'm not talking about it anymore. Um, listen to this. Prison planning. Rand Paul warns Trump Saudis see the U.S. response to Khashoggi killing as weakness. Now, I want to address a couple of things here. First of all, we have something to be thankful for, and that would be Rand Paul. He's been in the president's ear a lot, and Rand Paul, whether or not you're a libertarian or not, is almost irrelevant. Rand Paul is a, a peace-first person. Peace, not war. He wants Trump out of Afghanistan. He wants that money that we're paying trillions of dollars in the last 17 years, trillion with a T, he wants that spent on American infrastructure. Now, I know they battled back and forth. My Donald Trump said the funniest joke ever. He had it up to here with Rand. That was funny. But they, they always got along before. And it was a hard-fought battle to get in the White House, and they get along again. Well, there are a lot of people flooding my Facebook page and my YouTube page with these memes saying how Donald Trump hasn't done enough against Saudi Arabia. All right, he sanctioned them, first of all. And Rand Paul is trying to get him to stop selling arms there. Now, if both happen, What do you want, people? What, what, okay, you, you're, people that are against me so much are always telling me how liberal they are. Okay. You want war? You want Donald Trump to go to war with Saudi Arabia? I like Rand's idea. Let's just get away from them. Leave them to what they do. Leave. They're not harming Israel. They're not harming our interests. Leave. I'm personally very thankful for that kind of thinking. So here's what uh, uh, Paul is saying. This is Steve Watson. Senator Rand Paul has warned President Trump that a more severe response is required for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, who I spelled wrong in the comment lines, I see. Uh, the Saudi regime will view the U.S. as weak, according to Paul. In an interview with CBS on Sunday, Paul noted that sanctions are not strong enough. We need to punish the, the We need to punish who ordered this, who's in charge, and really the only thing they understand over there is strength, he said. He also said, I think we will see sanctions I think that they will see sanctions as weakness on the part of the president. And if the president wants to act strongly, he should cut off the arms sale, the senator continued. The thing about sanctions is that I think sanctions are pretending to do something without really doing anything. So for all of you that say that they hate all Republicans, okay, I used to feel the same way. Don't forget, I'm a libertarian. And a lot of you don't know that I voted for a lot of libertarians who lost in the Canton election, in the Ohio election. And you know what? I don't regret doing it because it strengthens that point of view. It makes people say, hey, look, this percentage of people voted libertarian. And you end up with more people of that mindset like Rand Paul in the, in the American government. So I, I'm not sorry that I did it. But my point is you have a lot of different views within the GOP right now. While the Democrat Party in my view, is stuck somewhere where the Republicans were in the 90s. The ones who are not inclusive now are not the GOP, it's the Democrats. Because if you don't believe in everything that they do, you are crucified. I'm not necessarily against the morning after pill, by the way. I don't have a problem with it, to tell you the truth. Other people are adamantly pro-life within the conservative movement. I'm not. I'm against third trimester abortions. I'm not real fond of people using abortions like birth control where you can just buy a condom. But if a condom breaks, 
Maybe your family, even if you're married, maybe your family can't afford another kid. I don't have a problem with the morning after pill. Some conservatives do. If you are a Democrat and you would say something to the point where you don't necessarily find yourself to be pro-choice, you might have a hate group marching in front of your house. So this matters. Okay? There's a lot of diversity within the big tent right now. Trump has opted to place sanctions against 17 Saudi Arabian individuals thought to be involved in the plot. However, most of those people are already in prison, Paul points out. The crown prince runs the country and we deal with him. If we put sanctions on people who are in prison, are we really doing anything to punish them? They're already in prison, Paul explained. Referring to the CIA's indication that he believes the crown prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing, Paul said, I think the evidence is overwhelming that the crown prince was involved, so no, I don't think that we can sweep this under the rug. You know what, this is good to see. Again, things to be thankful here. Rand Paul has stood up for journalists, and like I said, there aren't a lot of people standing up for journalists. There really aren't. There, again... 800 websites were shut down that didn't do anything wrong at all. Now we've got, uh, on the other side of the world, journalists being killed. Well, things tend to happen in waves. How long until things like that start happening here? Well, that could never happen in the U.S. Yeah. And you would never have um, a big brother watching everything you type into the Internet, right? Taxes would never be as high as they are, right? It's time for us to quit saying what can't happen, and it's time to really start being gra grateful for the people who are making sure that some of the things that aren't happening are intact. I know that that sounds weird, but I've said this a couple Thanksgivings, and I stand by it. One of the only things I'm really grateful for are the things that haven't happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> really. Uh, check this out, friends. Breitbart. Rand Paul on Trump's foreign policy. Build roads and bridges in America, not Afghanistan. You know what? Again, go Paul. Why are we ass deep in Afghanistan? For two years, 17 years. years. Listen to this. Actually putting America first. I'm just going to read it because so many people won't be able to hear it. But it gets on bright part. You can watch the video. Um... I'm tired of spending $50 billion a year in Afghanistan building roads and bridges over there where I would rather build roads and bridges here, Paul told Breitbart News Deputy Political Editor Amanda House, 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 during the wide-range interview that included President Donald Trump's push to advance an American first policy. He's got a point there. If we're going to do America first, and that's that's what we voted for him to do, if we're going to put America first, then isn't it time that we leave Saudi Arabia and start spending that money here? Isn't it time we leave Afghanistan and start putting that money here? If we do that, then we can afford to do what Rand Paul is talking about, too, and we can pull off funding to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is not just going to immediately side with our enemies because we pulled money off of them. Because Saudi Arabia is a different kind of Islam than Iran. They detest each other. Iran looks at Saudi Arabia as filthy as they look at Israel or the U.S. or an atheist or a Satanist or a Buddhist. They are the enemy. So we don't need to be selling arms to Saudi Arabia in order to keep Saudi Arabia on our team, so to speak. And that's very important to keep in mind. A study from Brown University released on Wednesday found that American taxpayers spend, get ready, I hope, I hope you're sitting down. <coughs> American taxpayers spent nine. Trillion dollars in military action on Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan since 2001, which is two trillion dollars more than all federal government spending during the 2017 2018 fiscal year. All right, let's take a really good look at this, shall we? Isn't there a better than average chance here 
that with all of that money being spent in 17 years, that if, if, if Afghanistan doesn't know already how to defend themselves, then they're not going to. Okay, it's time to get out of there. That that's I mean, and you those of you that you know, why bring division on Thanksgiving? From two thousand and one, Bush Republican, Obama Republican. I'm mean, excuse me, Democrat, Donald Trump Republican. Both parties have spent this much money. Rand Paul is saying that you know maybe we need to quit just rooting for the D or the R. And talk logically here. Um, by the same token, I'm a huge Trump supporter, but I'm seeing Rand's point of view here. I and I supported him before I got on the Trump train, which was something that I did after it was clear that Rand wasn't going to get in. I didn't like betray him or anything. I think that some of the people Trump surround himself with are really part of the foreign policy swamp that believes that war is always the answer. Paul cautioned. When I talk to the president, I hear that we have been at war for too long in Afghanistan. When I talk to him, I hear that his initial response is that we do not need permanent troops in Syria. I think that he truly believes that, Paul continued. I think he believes stronger than anything else, and he said it a million times, that the Iraq war was a mistake and it destabilized the Middle East, and yet he's surrounded by generals who often think that we cannot leave or we will lose or that we must or that we must take one more village in order to get a negotiated settlement. Or, even worse, the neocons who believe that it's unconstitutional surrender like we had in Japan or World War II, that's what they're hoping for. That's rarely the way that war ends, he said. <clears throat> the Kentucky conservative then added that America needs to reach a settlement with the Afghanistan government in which the U.S. can finally withdraw troops from the country and end the 17-year-long war in Afghanistan. Do you realize that World War II and World War I together didn't last this long? It almost never ends with unconditional surrender. It usually ends with a settlement. And in Afghanistan, there needs to be a settlement, Paul added. Now, he's exclaimed, he's added, he's cautioned, he's spoken in many different ways here. Um, <clears throat> in World War II, again, unconditional surrender was not completely, I hate when, you know, Breitbart kind of missed the boat on that one. It wasn't an unconditional surrender. Japan was actually allowed to keep their, their, uh, ruler, which, again, being a, being a dynasty, a kingdom, as it were, it was everything. So again, th that's worth seeing there. And we've got one more story before we get to the dumb deal of the day. I want to remind you that you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. And I want to give a shout out to Miss Ricciardi, who not only donated to the show, but now all the way to June, I get to talk about what the ASPCA does, which is awesome. People who donate, I promote your favorite charity online. And they are a wonderful charity. If you haven't looked up the ASPCA, they're wonderful. I, particularly if you are someone, well, I... I, I love animals, but I don't support PETA. Who would support PETA? Maybe somebody with PETA brains. And it, the PETA's a, a, a gang of thugs. Now, the ASPCA, they do wonderful things for the critters. Wonderful. So make sure you look them up. And you can do so while you're online donating to me, which you can do at the correct views on hotmail.com through PayPal. We've been demonetized been attacked, and your money keeps uh, the show going, keeps me being able to send the dots caps and all of that, so thank you. Daily Mail, <clears throat> bleeding billions. Now, I like this story. Net worths of top tech executives have taken a massive hit as Amazon, run by a liberal, Apple, run by liberals, Facebook, painfully liberal, and Google, Need I say more? YouTube. We know what YouTube did to us. We know how YouTube treats conservatives. We know that YouTube made it so that even churches cannot raise money on their platforms. Think about that. I posted it on my Facebook page. It was nothing more than a church that was simply, you know, they would give daily um, 
you know, like five minutes inspirational readings in the morning. Demonetized. So we know, we know, we know what side of the aisle uh, Google is on. And again, I'm not saying you have to be a Christian. I don't know too many atheists that like to see Christians silenced. Why? Because they understand uh, crap rolls downhill. If they can do it to Christians today, they can do it to Satanists, they can do it to Buddhists, they can do it to atheists, they can do it to anybody that they want to. <coughs> also, <coughs> Mark Zuckerberg got a, a lesson here in economics. When you piss off 50% of the population who are not raging socialists, then what you have ended up with is 50% of the people who are no longer going to support you and buy your stocks. Shazam, Sparky, oh, we didn't think of that. Use the thinking part of your brain. I mean, really, people, what did you think was going to happen? Look at Mark Zuckerberg in this picture. He looks like the girl, the alien from D Ant Word. I hate that band, but uh, again, if you want to know how I'm thinking on Thanksgiving, listen to Alien. Uh, I Sometimes I do. I feel like... And I, I read stories like this, and I see how unbelievably short-sighted these billionaires are. <clears throat> that they can't see where if they eliminate the free speech rights and the access to their platform from 50% of the people in the country, then 50% of the country is going to stop donating. They're going to stop buying stocks. Clearly. They're not going to quit using Facebook because it's already become part of their life. So Mark Zuckerberg is like, all right, well, what are they, they ain't going to quit. They built their whole online life around my platform. What are you going to do? We're going to quit donating. We're going to quit buying stocks. That's what we're going to do. Dumbass. The world's richest executives at tech companies, including the list I read, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, leftist, liberal, fascist, socialist, as my set falls apart, took a ma timber, uh, took a massive plunge. Oh, that's great. Did you see that? It took a massive plunge on Tuesday and investors scrambled to sell their shares. Let me know if anyone saw that. That was the most hilarious on-air mishap that has ever happened. That's great. I hope D-Lake makes a meme out of that one. I'm counting on you, David Lake. I'm counting on you. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos has lost a stunning $42 billion since early September, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index, and the e-commerce giant stock has dropped more than 25%. Ooh, that's a quarter back when I went to school. Embattled Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who took the jobs away from 800 outlets and thousands of journalists just because he didn't like their point of view, has also taken a beating, as reports indicate that he's lost $34 billion since late July and is now worth $52 billion, ranking as the seventh richest person in the world. How about YouTube? GoogleTube. YouTube's been garbage ever since they took it. So how's Google doing? After all, they demonetized all the people that I just told you about. How are they doing? Their chiefs, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, have lost a combined $20 billion from their peak wealth in July as the search engine stock has dropped 20% and closed in a bear market on Monday for the first time since 2011. If I read any more, the whole set may plunge with it. I wouldn't be surprised if my house fell into a sinkhole. Bezos, whose net worth peaked at $168 billion in September, appeals to have taken the biggest hit in recent months, though he remains the richest person in the world at $126 billion. Do I hate him because he's rich? No, I'm actually happy he got rich. I don't begrudge him a penny. But I'll tell you what I am kind of happy about. I'm happy that he's getting a dose of the way he treats other people. If... Look up the way, he, and I've done articles about this. You can find them at the Conservative Daily Post. They're still up. Google abuses the people in their warehouse. I mean, Amazon, excuse me, abuses the people in their warehouses like you wouldn't believe. They time how long they're allowed to go to the bathroom. 
they are just dreadful to them. So why? Why would anybody support something like that? If they can't get an unbelievably high number of items sent, packing, ship, whatever, they could lose their job and they work under such stress that it's unimaginable. And percentage-wise, statistics show that they their employees are on psych meds and seeking counseling at a rate that's way above the national average. And if that didn't say enough, We've got this. Oh, that sounds like the Dumby of the day. It is the Dumby of the day. For those of you that don't know, like my good friend Roger, we do the Dump Camp of the Month each and every month. And uh, we do the Dumby of the day once per show. The Dumby of the day here, guys. Oh, my God. George Soros, and those, the dumpy is going to the leftists, the Amazons, the Googles, all the people that trusted the fat, deep pockets of George Soros and his varicose veined finger. Ah, uh, shout out Skid Row. Economic collapse, Michael Snyder. George Soros sold huge amounts of Facebook and Netflix just before tech stocks crashed. So, Somebody's got some inside knowledge that he doesn't want the rest of you guys to have because you guys didn't know it was going to happen. But how did Big Daddy Soros know? For that matter, even if it's just his economic team who did it legally, okay, he didn't stand by the company, Facebook, when it was going down, when it started to go down in in large part because of the changes that they made in what they did at the back and call of Soros. So that I'm is more than easily worried and worthy here of the of the dumdy of the day. He said Facebook, pretty much, you know, here's a bunch of money, blah 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 blah. Make sure you get Alex Jones off your channel. So Alex Jones gets knocked off the channel. All the people that are now angry quit buying stocks and Soros says, yeah, that sucks. Bye. <laughs> That's liberal loyalty for you. And you can say what you want about the Koch brothers. I can take or leave them personally, but I'll put this out there. They didn't do something like this. I think it's funny because I hate Facebook, but George Soros just knifed Mark Zuckerberg right in the back, man, all the way to the sheet, all the way to the, the blade handle. Granddaddy Soros avoided a loss of more than $17 million by dumping shares of Facebook, Netflix, and Goldman Sachs just before the big crash started happening. In other words, he made out like a bandit by selling at the peak of the market. Is he smarter than all the rest of us? Did he have some inside information? Or is he simply lucky? In recent months, tech stocks have lost approximately a trillion dollars in revenue, in value, and many investors have been absolutely devastated, but not George Soros. According to the most recent filing with the SEC, Soros' fund management was able to dump shares of Facebook and Netflix. Oh my God, it was a miracle, friends. Just pure dumb luck. It happened just in time. Soros' fund management, which Soros funded and chairs excited social network giant Facebook completely exited, excuse me, I can read, exited social network giant Facebook completely in the third quarter, while also slashing positions in Netflix and Goldman Sachs stocks. Those three stocks have tumbled in the fourth quarter so far, with Facebook and Goldman Sachs setting new lows on Tuesday. They are down almost 20% and 15% respectively so far this quarter. High-flying streaming content giant Netflix has tumbled almost 29% since the end of September. Unfortunately, the top executives at the major tech companies were not as persistent, and many of them lost, you know, we went over that, I'm not going to read it again, it was the last story. They go over what they lost. Billions. Can you imagine losing $42 trillion? The atmosphere on Wall Street has completely shifted over the last couple of months. Not too long ago, uh, like everybody was saying that the the market was doing great. I don't think the market is doing that bad. I mean, I think there's going to be an inevitable crash because we're not on the gold standard. That's a given. 
But what's up? Uh, I mean, look at all the people that joined. I don't think that uh, we're headed for some great crash immediately. I think it's going to happen in the long run because we're not on the gold standard. America is a bankrupted nation held up by fiat currency backed by nothing. And global status is a currency which dwindles daily. So it's going to happen. But I don't think it's going to happen immediately. I don't think this is a sign that the economy is doing poorly, you know, in the way it's being run currently, which again is flawed. I don't think it's a sign that it's going south. I think it's more of a sign that people that have been marginalized, they've been called racists because they went to see their country do well. They've been called sexist because they didn't want to vote for a socialist hag. <clears throat> people like me who lost a full-time job when they did absolutely nothing wrong because they were cheated out of it by the left, by the people on Facebook. We have quit giving these monsters our money. And you're seeing it show up on their bottom line. And I think that's a good thing. I also think it's a good thing that you tuned in. I thank you for doing so, friends. Good night. God bless. Please donate to the show if you can. And if you're spending Thanksgiving with someone that you really love, hug them. Hold them really, really close. And let them know. Let them know just how much you care about them. Because you never know. They could be dead next year. They could just wake up and decide they didn't care about you this year. So whatever you do, make sure you thank them, love them, all that good stuff. Have a good one, friends. Good night. God bless. It takes me as long to shut these off as it does to get them started. Good night, Facebook friends. And last but not least, my loyal people on Facebook, thank you too. Good night. God bless. And happy Twinkie Day.